right, so now that we've derived an example, let's actually just find a formula to save some time rather than doing all these crazy steps. So it's called binomial. Um, first, we have to make sure something is binomial, and then we can use the formula. So something is considered binomial, assuming you're doing like identical trials. So like playing roulette over and over, um, flipping a coin over and over. Um, there can only be two outcomes every time. And they're independent, and it, the p remains the same, the probability. So the independent and the probability remaining the same are basically the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to identify what a success is. So what is it that we find successful? It might not necessarily be a good thing, right? Sometimes it's people dying because we're measuring death, but it's success in terms of what we're measuring. Um, and then we're going to find n, which is the no total number of trials. P will be the probability of a success, and Q will be the probability of a failure. Um, and it should make sense, since there's only two options, that Q will just be 1 minus P. And here's our formula, so we'll use this. If we understand it, it helps. So the N choose X tells us the number of ways. So that's why we're multiplying by a number, because usually these things can happen more than one way. P to the X power. So P is probability of success, and we're saying X successes. So that's why it has an X power. So three wins would have a power of three. Four wins would have a power of four. And then N minus X just means the remaining are failures. So N minus X failures. So we'll jump into an example and make sense of it. But I think understanding the formula makes it easier to use. Otherwise, it's kind of a scary looking formula. And you'll notice this tells us the equal case. So it gets a little challenging when we need to do more thans or less thans. Um, but first, let's just identify if things are binomial, and then we'll use the formula. So in example three, we're going to decide, can we use the binomial distribution or not? Um, so x will be the number of successes. Um, so how about if we do the number of light bulbs in a sample of a th uh, defective light bulbs in a sample of a thousand light bulbs? This would be binomial because we're counting successes and then we're just the light bulbs either defective or not. So there's only two options. Um, we're probably assuming the probability is the same for all light bulbs. But you'll notice it's basically just a repeat of the same trial over and over. Is this light bulb success successful? Yes, no. Um, what if we did the weights of apples? No, right? We don't know how to do this yet. Probability of a weight of an apple, we have no idea. But it's definitely not binomial because there's way more than two options. So I said rolling a dice isn't exactly binomial anymore, but we can make some adjustments. So in C, it's the number of times the sum of two dice is larger than nine. And so I'm not looking at the sum in general. I'm only looking at the sum is larger than nine or not larger than nine. So this actually oddly is binomial. And then larger than nine would be my success. And this is telling me 80 trials. So information we'll do when we do actual examples. Um, and then if we were just looking at the sum of two dice overall, no, because we've seen this already, there's more than two options. All right, so let's do the formula once. Let's find the probability um, of winning fi uh, five wins betting on red. Um, so just to remind you, probability of betting on red was 18 out of 38. So then Q was 20 out of 38 from when that was black and green combined. We did this a couple of videos ago. Videos ago. So let's use the formula to find the probability of five wins. So I like to talk about the meaning of it rather than just using it. So I'll just squeeze this down here and delete it after. 
So the probability of five wins means P of five or x equals five. We could do an equal sign just to match it exactly. So we're gonna do n choose five. So n here would be nine, because that's the total number of times I'm playing and then I'm trying to win five. So nine choose five. We'll do p, 18 out of 38, to the fifth power. And the reason I'm doing five is for five wins. And then we'll do Q. And then for Q, I actually don't really use the formula. If I win five times, how many times do I lose? Four. Which is nine minus five, but I think it's easier to just think about what's left over. And then just a reminder, the nine choose five, right, tells me the number of ways this can happen. So I think just by understanding this, it makes it easier to use. All right, so let's figure out how to do this on the calculator. So we're gonna do nine choose five. Nine math, PRB choose five. Um, you can hit enter or you can actually just immediate hit immediately hit times. Even if yours looks in the other format, it'll work. Um, just put parentheses on the fractions. So 18 out of 38 to the fifth power. You hit this button for powers, it's like flashing on the right. And then you can type any power you want. Um, if you have, you might have to hit the arrow to get out of the power or you might automatically get out of the power. 20 out of 38 to the fourth. Um, and just cause this cal all calculators are different. So some of you might, your calculator might have this display just so you don't freak out. Looks like that. It has a little arrow for the powers. As long as it has the arrow or the power raised, you're doing powers. And you'll hit enter and you should get 0 0.2306. So if you, even if your calculator looks like this, it should be getting that answer. So 2306 is the chance of getting five wins. All right, so winning money means you need to win at least half, right? So at least half here would be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Does that make sense? Because it's out of nine. So f four wouldn't be winning half, right? Four and a half would be half. So five, six, seven, eight, or nine would be winning some money. And so that's the, this is the problem with binomial, is you can only do one at a time. So unfortunately, we have to repeat this formula for all of these numbers. So I'm going to color code each one just to keep track. All right, so we have to do the formula um, five times, except luckily we already did the first one, so that saves us a little bit of time. So we already did P of five, so P of six. We're gonna take the formula. We're gonna do nine choose six for six wins out of nine. So we'll do 18 out of 38 to what power? So now we want six wins, so it'll be six instead of five. And then if we win six, we lose three. That would be nine minus three. All right, I'm gonna write them all out and then pull the calculator out. So then the next one we do nine choose seven, 18 out of 38, and the power changes to seven for seven wins. And then you can do nine minus seven, or in my head, if I win seven, I lose two of them. So hopefully this is making sense. You'll notice the only thing changing is the bottom of the choose and then the powers. Otherwise the formula stay in the same. And then we'll do nine choose eight for eight wins. So 18 out of 38 to the eighth power. If we win eight, then we lose one. And our final one would be nine choose nine for nine out of nine wins. 18 out of 38 means we win all nine. So we lose zero. So get those set up and then we'll pull the calculator out. So the only downside is we have to do these one at a time and then add them up. So 
So if you have the previous one open, that's gonna save you a lot of trouble. So you're gonna hit second enter and you're just gonna change the powers. So change the three, change the six, change to a six and then change the six here. And again, if you have the other calculator, the other format, it just looks like nine NCR six, 18 over 38 to the, is how I read that six, and then 20 over 38 to the three. The only thing you just need is you need to make sure you have parentheses on those fractions. And so for six, I get 0.1383. And then second enter, and we're just gonna change the powers and the NCR. So it'll be an NCR seven, seven power, two power. get 0532. 3, 4. Sorry, I went the wrong direction. If you don't use second enter, this is going to be really tedious. And this is why you have to type everything at once. If you're not typing everything at once, you can't do second enter. So I'm going to change it to a 1 and an 8. Change it to an 8. Right, so 8, 8, and 1, right? We're just changing that. And we get point oh one two zero. Notice things are getting a little less likely. It's just harder for it to happen. And then for the nine, um, since we're doing second enter, you can type everything. But technically anything to the zero power is one. So I didn't have to type that. And we get point, sorry about that. Oh, oh, one, two. And so if you're using calculator nine, nine and zero. All right, and we can just add them up to find the probability. So I'm gonna clear that just cause it's overwhelming. 2306 plus 1383 plus 0534, right? We can add them up now cause we're saying any of these could happen. And we get 4355 five, chance of winning money. All right, and so let's just finish this up with losing money. Losing money would be zero, one, two, three, or four wins because you're wi losing more than you're winning. Um, so we can repeat this pattern five more times, um, or we could do one minus the probability of winning money. So sometimes we have shortcuts. So we'll just do one minus the 0.4355. And you'll see we're more likely to lose money than win money. Yeah, we get five, six, four, five. If you really want to practice that formula, you could do the formula for zero through four, and you should add them up and get five, six, four, five. But if we don't need to do it, we shouldn't. But if you do want practice, that would be a good chance. All right, we'll do more binomial in the next video.